So welcome back guys, this is part two of my wiring video. We're making a bare bones scheme for our cafe racer because um, normally a bike would have way too much wires and way too much plugs everywhere, um, but you don't all need them. Now part one was about how to test the basic stuff that we need to fire up our bike. And now we're gonna uh, look at how we're gonna wire and connect all these together so that everything works. Now I'm not gonna wire them exactly in this video because that will take way too long and uh, but you can watch this uh, for my normal series because I'm building a cafe racer as well and um, uh, I make this series where I take everything step by step and you can follow it there. This is specifically to follow a, a really great diagram um, you find a lot of diagrams on the internet but this specific diagram is specially made for the XV750 and um, uh, Virago uh, 8183 uh, or 920s as well uh, they basically are the same and um, uh, uh, there is just a standard diagram which you can find in the mo most of the owner manuals and um, if you take the, uh, the center out uh, you get a blank piece of paper and that this is what we're gonna follow to hook up all these uh, special parts now i could have um, uh, drawn all these lines but this great guy dan of the virago tech forum also known as totally red virago uh, he already did this so i found no uh, um, reason to do this over so it, uh, it was my drawing uh, it's his drawing so all credits go to him and uh, also his explanation is great and this is just basically what I follow. Uh, so what you can do is you can follow the link in the description below and uh, you can go to this forum and you can read out everything. But I thought it was, would be useful to make a video out of it so you can uh, constantly press pause and then hook up uh, all the parts that you have. So uh, I'm gonna make this video and I'm gonna, kind of gonna talk you through um, the drawings that I'm constantly showing you in the screen, okay? And these are his uh, drawings that I'm using because again, uh, there is no use for me to draw this again whilst uh, this already exists, okay? So let's start with this video. I'm gonna have myself a sip of coffee because we're gonna take it relaxed. We're gonna do this easy, okay? Here we go. So this is the drawing that we're going to start with. We've got all the components here and we're only going to do the, um, uh, the basic parts that we need to fire up the engine. Okay, so we're not going to do headlights and bulbs and all that kind of stuff. Maybe uh, you can follow that in a normal video that I'm showing, but we're going to talk about the basic stuff so that your battery or that your bike will run. Okay, so this is the first drawing that we need. We took out everything. Uh, in the center and now we're going to page one. So first of all we're going to run a positive and negative cable because we want to start with the basics that everything has got our power. So you will see a red wire and a uh, black wire. Let's start with the red wire. So we've got our battery here and we want to make sure that this battery gives current to all our parts but also gets uh, filled with new power by our, by our regulator rectifier okay because the reg regulator rectifier basically charges your battery but your battery also has to give current so you already know these two have to be connected but before we ever even do that we want to make sure that we put a fuse between that so we're going to run a 20 amp fuse from our battery so that everything that will be after that is completely secured by this 20 amp fuse. So all the current that runs out or in uh, will be passing this 20 amp fuse. So that's what you can see also in the drawing. So you can see the main fuse running here from our battery. We want to fuse that. But what, not, what is not being fused is our starter switch as it is it called in your drawings now this is not a starter switch this is your starter solenoid let's call it that okay because i'm dutch and i get confused by that because this is a starter switch in my point of view but they call this a start button or whatever or a engine start switch or whatever so this is your starter button and we're just going to call this starter switch which is in the manual called like that starter solenoid okay 
So you have a starter solenoid, and from that positive, there will be a straight line to your starter solenoid going in here, okay? In the top one here. It doesn't matter which way around it is, because it's just a switch. It opens up and it closes, okay? So we're gonna run it in the starter solenoid straight, and the other one is having, having a fuse of 20 amps. That's why you see it here, okay? So a straight one from your battery going to your starter solenoid, and then you halfway, you will have a connection with a 20 amp fuse. So this is the first thing that's coming out of your battery. So we've got that starter solenoid now connected in one uh, way with positive. Now, after that fuse, which you can see here, after this fuse, we're going to our main switch, which is our ignition key lock, okay? See, I only have two wires there. That's enough for me. Why? Because a wire goes in, a switch will open up, and then the, the current will come out. And now a lot of times you will have to see, uh, you will see that we have a switch between just the normal running current from our battery. And the first switch is obviously our ignition switch. So now our ignition switch is being filled with current, okay? So it's, it's, it's fired up now. The other, uh, we make a small break halfway that positive lead. So we're making the positive lead straight there. But halfway, halfway, we're gonna go to our regulator rectifier. Because the regulator rectifier, as I just told you, has to be connected with your battery because it needs current. It has to be filled. So we're gonna do that as well. And that's it, this positive lead. If you're gonna use these switch, these connections, then you know that the other one, uh, the other end of your um, uh, your plug will be the red wire that you have to fill with current. You might wonder, um, uh, do I use the original cables? It's your choice. I run all my cables new. I might use the 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 the, the plug. I don't know yet. I think I'm gonna use Super Seal, but. Um, doesn't matter as long as you got that one fired up okay so that's the only first thing that we do with the red wire now let's go to the negative as you can see from the battery there runs a, a black wire now I can't stress enough your bike your XP 750 Virago but it goes for any bike that's important but especially with our bikes we have a really really bad ground connection to the frame in the normal way that we are ground, that we have ground. I like even to put two grounds somewhere to make sure that I have a good ground, solid ground of my bike. So what I do, I run a thick cable and when I'm talking thick cables, this is what I call a thick cable, really thick ground cable. And I make sure that there's somewhere on my frame, I have a really solid ground running from my battery and to the ground. And after that, that really grounded cable comes back in my distribution block, what I use. This is a distribution block, what I use. I put the ground here, so everything that needs ground will come from here. I even have an extra distribution block to make sure that that ground that I made somewhere um, is just being distributed everywhere where I need ground. So this is also what's in the drawing. They say, okay, put that negative uh, not only to ground, but also straight to your, again, regulator rectifier. So now my regulator rectifier has the black cable charged as well. So we have ground and we have positive now in our regulator rectifier, okay? So that's the first step that we take. Let's continue with the next step. So we have these leads and we have the basic components uh, kind of fired up now because after our ignition switch, which has current now, we run wires out of there. Yeah, that's after the switch. So switch open, switch closed. Uh, then certain parts need, uh, uh, need a uh, positive wire as well. So in my case, I could split this to a fuse box. Now this is your typical fuse box which you can use, or you can even use your original fuse box. I wouldn't do that because it doesn't really look nice, but if you uh, would buy a fuse box like this, you're good to go. And this is the fuse box that you see here. You've got four fuses, so one for instance for your tail or headlight, and uh, some for your signal lights and etc. etc. 
So we want to fire this end up because basically the only thing that a fuse does is if the fuse is in, um, if the fuse is in, then we have, we've got current. If there is flowing too much amps, then the fuse will pop and it stops the current. Um, so basically what's going in is coming out as well. Um, I use this uh, fancy uh, fuse bug because it looks cool and um, but also because it's really handy. What I will do, if you choose to use a distribution block like I have, I'll put in a link in the description below where you can buy such things, uh, most times at water sports shops for instance. Uh, what I will do is run that ignition current cable in here, so then all my fuses get lit. Okay, there's only one cable going in. Uh, if you are using a block like this, you will run several cables to get that current in okay but it's still the same current plus is plus it's coming from your battery and that's it after your 20 amps the, the all the plus is everything is the same even though you have all different kind of colors it doesn't matter it's still the same current yeah okay a positive current so if you would use a distribution block like this you would run after your ignition key so the current that is coming out you would run for instance a, a brown wire in there and also a blue wire in there as you can see here now uh, be careful because one of those wires shouldn't have a fuse so that brown is going to your fuse box or it doesn't matter it just fires up your fuse box so that's the plus that I'm got running here but it also has a split without a fuse straight to your regulator rectifier and that's the brown wire here so again there is a cut wire here uh, from the ignition key so it gets current when it does and it's got a permanent uh, plus wire okay um, and that's the only wires that you use you won't be using this yellow wire okay so it's enough that's the only what so if you buy aftermarket regulator rectifiers now you know ah that's why i don't have so many wires okay so that's what you put in your regulator rectifier then we're going to the next page already. So now for the next cable. So we're coming from this starter solenoid. This starter solenoid has power, remember, from the thick cable that we ran in. And now we're gonna put it on this red-white cable, okay? So the red-white cable which comes out here, we're gonna run that from your starter solenoid, the red-white will go to your TCI unit. This is your TCI unit. It will have a red-white cable. If you don't know where it is, you're gonna look for it. Where is the red-white cable? Where is the red-white cable? And you will find it here is your red-white cable. Now that red-white cable, if you cannot find it, if you have a TCI like this and you're running new wires like I do, then you would have to find out which one is it. So you take your original um, cable tree you put in the plug and then you can see hey wait a second this is my red white cable you needed the plug anyway if you are using this TCI perhaps I will use this TCI I don't know yet and then I see okay I've got a red white here and that's what the one that comes from your starter solenoid so that's the first one and it runs in like that make that one then that red ca cable red white cable continues to your starter uh, your, to your ignition coils. So we have these two ignition coils here and two ignition coils have these red white cables. If you're have, having different ignition coils you would have typically have a ignition coil with an orange cable and with a gray cable. Now important information is that your orange is your rear cylinder and your gray is your front cylinder. Okay but this is for later on uh, when we're going to use that but the, the orange one is your rear cylinder and the gray one is your front cylinder but now we're only running red white so now the ignition coils also have current let's continue that red white cable if you want to use a kill switch you can you don't have to if you want to have a kill switch you would run in your um, in your first switch which is on your steering handlebar now it's pretty simple because this is just a cut wire again okay the wire opens 
um, when it's closed and it closes when it's uh, it's on. So what you do is if you don't know which wires are from your kill switch, what you can do, you put you just put your ohms meter in there, and I would have to look. Hey, look at that! There are two red cables going to that switch. Well, that's the cable. Normally it would be a closed line, and now it's an open line if the kill switch is off. So I'm gonna measure if that is correct. Just to perform a test. Hey, the kill switch is off now. And if I put the kill switch on, there is no current. Okay, so this is just our cable. So you see that cable going here. That's your cable. Your go cable goes into your kill switch and continue to your fuse, to a few fuse port here. Okay, and that will be Something will work and something will, won't work if we put that in, if the kill switch is off or on, okay? So we put it in the fuse box. In my case, I will give it a place here. Okay, so now we're gonna continue because that was the only thing that we needed to do here in this page. So we wanna run a ground for our TCI. So you will find a thick black cable here and you want to give your TCI a ground. So you just, you can use, what I did is um, I'm going to make a one strong ground cable here and I'm going to run it from my distribution block. You could also run it straight to your frame of your bike if you like. But again, I can't stress enough, you want to have good ground and you want to make sure, okay, this is a really clear ground cable and run it straight to your TCI. So we've done that. But you also see a blue white cable. This is the blue white cable coming from your ignition coil. Now, don't get confused. You can see uh, different colors coming out of your ignition coil here. And if you have uh, th something like this, you wanna, you wanna know which one is which one. But um, if you wanna follow the colors of the scheme, then you would uh, use the blue one and the blue one will be a blue uh, white one, okay? So the blue white cable from the ignition coil is going, 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 going straight to your starter switch. And this is your press switch that you, that you have here. Now the press switch is grounded as well. So one end goes to ground and the other end goes to your um, to your um, ignition coil, okay? So uh, often, this is something interesting, often those press buttons are straight on your handlebar and they get their ground from your handlebar, okay? This is correct. So the only thing that it has, uh, it, it has a wire running in and the other end goes straight to your handlebar and gets its ground from the handlebar, okay? So that's what you can see also in the drawing, um, that it is straight going from blue, uh, blue white needs ground somewhere, so needs a loop. And um, uh, if you press that button, then you will make ground and then your ignition, uh, 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 ignition, sorry, your starter solenoid has its old power, okay? Because it's got positive current and a negative current is coming basically from your handlebar. That's how you can uh, tell, okay? Now, another thing that needs to be done in this step is running um, your power from your TCI to your ignition coils. Now, as I told earlier, the ignition coil uh, wires have two colors. We've got an orange one and a gray one. So what comes out of your TCI are these cables with an orange color and a gray one. Now, the orange cable is for your rear cylinder and the gray cable is for your front cylinder. Okay, so you can see them here. Your orange cable runs to your rear cylinder and the gray cable runs to your front cylinder. If you have coils with both uh, orange cables, no problem, but make sure that you connect the coils to the right cylinder, okay? Um, I have to be honest, I am not sure if this will be a huge effect, but um, I've got the feeling 
that they thought about it, uh, thought about this, and uh, why would they change color? Why would there be a gray and uh, the other one a orange one? So I wanted to figure out uh, and to make sure which one goes where. And I know that in the 920s, uh, especially, they have those separate colors. And I'm not sure if all the coils have different colors in 750s, but I just want to make sure, okay? So now you know. So that's what you need and then your TCI is completely hooked up. Now these are the wires that you have to run. There is one more thing that we shouldn't forget and that is your pickup coils because you probably have seen that you um, haven't connected these guys yet. Your stator and your pickup coils. Now, this is not a hard part because these are just standard plugs, okay? And we're gonna use those standard plugs. We're not gonna change them. Yes, you can. If you want, you can change them to uh, different plugs if you want, but you wanna make sure that these are connected. So, um, as I uh, mentioned in my last video, we ha have typically a cable from our coming from our uh, pickup coils, and that's this one, and this one goes straight in your TCI. You just plug it in and they are ready to go, okay? So that's um, what you do here. And we've got our stator. And these three white wires of the stator go straight in your regulator rectifier. That's it, okay? That's the only thing that needs to be done. And um, if you have done all that, then you're ready to go. If you would press the start button, then things would fire up and your bike will run. Now, what you also can find in your um, uh, in the scheme uh, with the link, which you can find in the description below, you also have different gouges, or in other words, um, one cable is thicker than the other one. So especially that positive and ground cable should be pretty thick, uh, like 12 gauge. Uh, for the European or Can uh, uh, people from Canada or whatever, non-American, uh, 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 convert that to millimeters uh, because it's now in gouges. So thick cables typically would run from your battery straight. The first ones are uh, pretty thick as well as going to these um, points of your ignition coil. These are uh, pretty thick cables. And the other one are, uh, are, are less thick. Um, for instance, the, the, these simple wires, but you can also see what's originally on your, for instance, ignition coils, use the same cables. Don't go thinner than that. Thicker is always okay, but don't go thinner. And the same goes for the, um, uh, this one here, which is running, running from your main switch to your regulator rectifier. You can see that in your regulator rectifier, there are certain sizes here and uh, keep following those sizes, okay? In this case, a 14 gauge. Okay, so this was how to hook up your bike. I hope I helped you a little bit um, and getting more comfortable with this. Of course, you would have to run headlights, uh, blinking lights and everything. I won't do that in a scheme like this because I'm just talking you through the scheme and it's just really easy. You have a positive in and a positive out if it has a switch and that positive goes in your light and the other way goes to the ground and that's it. Um, so that's not so complex, I think. Um, you can always watch my videos and I, there you can see how I hook things up. Uh, so if that helps you, but this is the most important part. Thank you so much for watching. If this helped you, again, give, you, give me a thumbs up or leave a comment in the section below and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.